What's going on everybody? Back again, this time with a shotgun that has had very little coverage except for a great video by uh, Hickok45. And that is the Emperor Arms Duke Silver in this situation here. They do have other finishes, but this is the Silver Model 12 gauge pump action shotgun. So um let's start by just kind of covering what kind of class of shotgun this is it's not even considered a shotgun it's uh it's a non-nfa item um it's considered a firearm and um that's why it could be so short and not require any type of tax stamp for an sbs format now it comes with um this bird's head uh handle over here. It's kind of like the Raptor handle that you see on the shock waves and the TAC 14s. It has wood furniture, which is nice. It's uh, Turkish walnut. And I just kind of wanted to cover um, just some things for those of you that are in the market for one of these or is looking at comparing them to um, the shock wave or the TAC 14 as to what you could expect. So um, let's start just by kind of covering some of the basics. So this is a four plus one. So the magazine tube only holds four rounds as opposed to the shockwave, which holds an extra round five. Um, but what you do get is a glass breaker here at the end. Um, you've got a side saddle that's already uh, attached to a quad rail that comes with the shotgun. So this is how it comes out of the box. There's nothing that I've added to or changed on this thing at all. Um, the silver model uh, is going to be nickel plated. So nickel boron and um, all the internals are coated to match. Um, the, let me go ahead and open this up. So as you can see, internals are all coated to match. Everything in there that I can see anyways um is either stainless or chrome lined as in the uh not chrome lined but it is a, a, a smooth bore chromed um barrel over here and then nickel plated on the interior so very nice uh considering that you're getting a, a nice slick finish that's going to be resistant to um any of the elements but then you have wood <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose to an, an extent that's treated obviously, but um, it's just, it's got a nice like old school versus new school and tactical look. It's just kind of a blend of all that um, together. So I like the look of it personally. I definitely think that um, I would, uh, in terms of looks, I like this better than the Shockwave and uh, the TAC-14, but that's just personal preference. It does not weigh much. I mean, it probably weighs seven pounds or so, um, which, you know, for a small little shotgun seems like a lot, but, um, you're going to be, you're going to be supporting it with the other hand over here. And it's not going to feel like a lot of weight because, uh, you've got a nice little balance on where that weight falls and the balance is right around, right around the front of the receiver is where. This would balance it right around here. So not too bad. Um, and I guess like these are, are starting to really freaking sell um, out and about. They're getting harder and harder to find. And I just uh, wanted to kind of cover some of the things that I've noticed uh, right off the bat. Um, in comparison to the Shockwave and to the Tech 14, which I've also owned both of those models. So the fit and finish on these is not exactly pristine. <laughs> they are somewhat rough. You'll find some machining flaws like what you're seeing on that little pick rail right here. Um, you've got some rough edges here. Uh, you kind of have them here and there all over uh, the quad rail at least, but um, the magazine tube, um, the barrel, 
and all the main components of the shotgun seem to have better finish. I haven't really found any flaws there just yet, but I did find that the wood is just slightly not flush with the receiver. So they did a decent job of blending it, but there's still a little bit of a lip. And um, the texturing is very nice. Very, very nice. However, they're going to have some flaws here and there with that as well, as you can see here. So nothing major. It's still, I mean, for the money, it's an excellent buy. Um, it shoots like a champ, as you would expect of just about any pop, uh, um, pump action shotgun. So, I mean, it, uh, it accepts uh shells of up to three inches so two three quarter and then uh three inch shells i have heard some people say that they're able to manage fitting five shells in here if they are uh two and three quarters i have not noticed that i am only able to fit four at this point so um not sure if i can put any of those rumors to rest or not but i can tell you that uh this is the latest generation so uh as of today which is July 29th, 2020. This is the latest generation you'd be buying if you went and bought one new today. Now, what they've changed on this latest generation is this, uh, this um, shell saddle right here is different from the one that was on the first gen that uh, people were complaining about because they wouldn't hold shells very well. And if you'll notice on those, so let me just take one of these out to show you what I'm talking about. But on the old shell ho holders, first of all, it was a four shell holder. Um, and then the clamp itself, uh, was a little bit, it was cut a little bit wider at the tips over here. So it just gave your shells more room to be able to fall through, unfortunately. But as far as I could tell with this one, they sit in there pretty sturdily. Um, and I'm sure that once you get, uh, some good uh, uh, slugs and some high brass uh, with high recoil shells. It might uh, have some of these shells start slipping off the side over here. But as far as I can tell so far, um, and I've put buck through it and I've put uh, some, some low velocity slugs and uh, they have not been able to shake loose yet. So good news there. I'm sure if you flip them, because I, I, I usually keep uh, the brass at the bottom over here so I can just kind of uh, fit them in real quickly from uh, pulling them from underneath and instead of over. So if you do have any problems where these are sliding out on your rig, you could always flip them uh, over to where the brass side is on the top and that'll keep them from slipping out. So just a little FYI there. But outside of that, the glass breaker is a little bit different on the new gen. So on the old one, it was kind of looked like a uh, looked like a separate piece that was the nut. And then the glass breaker was incorporated within the nut. And um, it was a black glass breaker at one point on the early gens. Then it was a nickel glass breaker. But again, a separate piece. Now it looks like it's a nut and glass breaker all in one. So kind of nice. It just gives you that extra little um, bit of peace of mind knowing that uh, if you do need to use this thing, that it's not going to be a separate piece that can kind of start slipping under the nut or uh, move around on here or what have you. Um, and, you know, these are right now, they're retailing for about $575, I want to say is their retail um, value. And right now on GunBroker, uh, people are paying stupid money for these. Uh, needless to say, this is not a shotgun that you should spend $1,000 on. And if you are one of those four saps that ended up buying one for over a grand please do not expect it to look like a thousand dollar shotgun when it comes to fit and finish um, when it comes to quality of all the componentry uh, it's just it's on the level with the shockwave and tac 14 maybe slightly better quality than either one of those maybe um, but outside of that it's you know to spend a thousand dollars on something like this would be really ridiculous in my point of view. So 
Um, not to, you know, discourage anybody from buying one of these. Just make sure you buy it at a price that you're comfortable with, knowing that um, it is priced appropriately for what you're getting uh, at its retail price of $5.75. So if you're spending, you know, plus or minus 50 bucks, hey, you got yourself a great deal. Um, anything beyond that, uh, if you're spending over $700, I'd say put your money towards something that's a little bit more proven um, and with a company that's a little bit more uh, prevalent in being a quality firearms uh, manufacturer. Don't expect too much when it comes to fit and finish from these uh, Emperor Arms, at least the Duke models. I know that they've got a couple others out there, the Zeus and uh, the Mogul and, and uh, a couple others, but um, this one's their bread and butter. This is their most popular model, and thus far, it hasn't disappointed me with what I paid for it. Uh, I paid 600 bucks for this thing with shipping and everything. It was like 615 bucks. so um, I am definitely not disappointed when it comes to that. It's a nice, reliable pump-action shotgun, uh, which is exactly what I was looking to get. Something that was short that you can just kind of tuck away under the bed um, or leave bedside uh, for home defense, and that's the purpose it's going to serve, and it's going to serve it quite well. However, um, like I said, it, it all comes down to price point, and in my opinion, what you're getting for the money is a very nice basic pump action shotgun um, or firearm, right? That's a non-NFA item. And uh, if you want to be in that class of really short um, 12 gauge firearms that uh, do not need a tax stamp, there are a couple different options right now. And this is one of them. And I would say that um, in comparison to the Shockwave and to the TAC-14, I personally like this better. I like the look of it better. Um, I like the features of it better. Uh, and I like uh, the price point uh, versus something like the TAC-14, which if you get it in the uh, Marine Coat, uh, you're talking, you know, $750, $800. Um, so again, you're getting a lot more for the money with this model. Uh, but again, it's not going to be one where... It's, it's not going to be without its minor flaws here and there. So just be forewarned and prepared. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I will be more than happy to answer them in the comments section. I will be coming out with a few videos this week. So be on the lookout. I'm going to be covering the ACR and why it's still a very relevant um, firearm in today's uh, assault weapon industry. <laughs> and uh, we'll be covering the uh, XCR later this week. And uh, the XCR 308 to be specific, and uh, and why I feel it's a better option than the Scar 17. Yes, you heard that right. So if you're interested, tune in to find out more. Take care, guys.